Now we have uh, what I believe to be a very interesting guest for you guys. His name is John O'Hara. He's the Assistant Director of Communications at the Heartland Institute and author of A New American Tea Party, The Counter-Revolution Against Bailouts, Handouts, Reckless Spending, and More Taxes. John, welcome to the Young Turks. Hey, thanks for having me. Uh, we appreciate you coming on. John, there's plenty that you and I disagree on, but I'd like to start by focusing on what we agree on. Beautiful. Okay. So now... Um, First of all, we agree that uh, bailouts were a disaster. Is that right? Yeah, I, 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 I think they were, and I think our, our disagreement there might have been, uh, I think your, your, uh, your take might be that it's in the execution. Um, I think the, the premise of bailing out these uh, corporations was a, a disaster, but I might be wrong there. All right, so let's, let's get into that a little bit. Here's the thing, John. Sure. I, I have 0% interest in bailing out any bankers. Okay. Great. Uh, now, the problem is, uh, I do believe that the world economy was on the precipice. I do believe that there was real danger, that they weren't making it up, right? Uh, but the pro in my mind, the problem is the situation that got us in there in the first place, where we let them take tremendous risk, and we let them grow so big that they did endanger the world economy. So can you agree with me that perhaps better regulation would have been the way to go don't let them get too big to fail don't let them take uh, you know over leverage so they wind up taking risks that endanger the taxpayers money you know i'm not sure that it's it's more regulation as it might be enforcing a lot of existing regulation i mean we there it's there there are all sorts of things that go wrong on on wall street and there are a lot of bad actors there but you know even bernie madoff uh, it was uh, it was it was it wasn't regulation. It wasn't the government a uh, government that caught him. It was actually a private uh, individual in the in the private sector. Um, mm -hmm. I think that you know I, I I'm not so sure the case has been made uh, that we were on on the precipice and that we needed to do that. I think one of the big things that's that's overlooked and it's, it's overlooked by uh, even in President Obama's speech uh, toward the end of the week, I believe it was in Ohio, when he started talking about cracking down on Wall Street, is some of the perverse incentives put out there by the government that puts the taxpayers at risk. Uh, having basically incentivizing banks to, to lend to folks that they probably shouldn't be lending to or at rates they shouldn't be lending to. Um, you know, I think we're 80 percent. We, the taxpayers, are now 80 uh, percent uh, have a stake in uh, AIG. To, I mean, that's that's just absolutely ridiculous. Um, do I think we should be meddling in bonuses on Wall Street? No. Do I think that we probably have a right to, given that, uh, particularly in the case of AIG and others, because we're essentially uh, the, the Uncle Sam is the the majority uh, stakeholder? Uh, maybe. I just disagree with the premise that we did it in the first place. All right, uh, so let me get more specific and see what you think of the specifics here. Because, uh, look, there were real actions taken in deregulating that led to this mess. Uh, for example, in 2004, the SEC had a meeting where they took off the traditional leverage cap of about 12 to 1. So if they had a dollar uh, that they could invest $12, or in a lot of cases just bet $12. Now, uh, since they lifted the caps, the new re regulation, in essence deregulation, was well, we'll let the bankers decide what they think is uh, the appropriate level of risk. And unsurprisingly, they thought the appropriate level of risk was much, much, much higher. So Bear Stearns and Lehman Brothers, that got in so much trouble, went up to 33 to 1 in many cases on leverage. Citigroup at one point on some assets went up to 95 to 1 in leverage. Now, when you take that much risk, you're also going to make a lot of money in the short run, and that's why they push for the deregulation. But it's almost certainly going to blow up in the long run. Can you let, see how that let, deregulation let, hurt? Look, let, let it let it blow up on them. Um, it, let it blow up. I mean, it, that, okay, that gets look, us to point here, number here. two. I know what you're saying. Let, let's that gets us to point number two, John. Because if you say, look, if the bankers blow up and we don't have to step in, what business is it of ours? And I totally agree. I do. Okay. Now the problem, the reason it's our business is because of deregulation number two, and this was under done under uh, Democrats and Republicans. Uh, the guy who pushed forward is Phil Graham, the senator from uh, Texas, of course, was a Republican, but it was Clinton's administration. And they got rid of Glass-Steagall. And so that allowed these banks that were taking so much risk to use citizens' money. The commercial banks got combined with the investment banks. So then all of a sudden, our money was at risk. Can you see how that deregulation really hurt I, us? I, I actually think that, you know, I've, I read in the, uh, in the journal yesterday, I believe, I, I don't know if it's the case that... 
uh, they can that I think there's a blurring of a distinction between uh, whole, uh, the two, two different kinds of banks. But look, he, here's the problem, and I, I think when you get into the nuances of this stuff, um, is it, from my perspective, arguing from a, the free market perspective, um, and look, let them fail, let them take risk, let them make some money if if, if they can. You know, that's America. Um, and I, I think the problem is, is that it's, we're we're arguing from an imperfect status quo. Um, we live in a mixed economy where there are many regulations. There are bad regulations. There are probably there's a necessary sort of baseline of regulations, and there are various subsidies and carve outs that that these guys and their and their lobbyists that descend on D.C. Uh, uh, get for themselves. And I think you know. Going in the direction of more regulation isn't the answer. There are always going to be cracks and, and ways for them to wiggle out and, and, and get special uh, exceptions. You know, take take the health care debate. Um, you know, we're talking about a goal, John, a worthy I, goal. John, listen, the, the health care debate is going to untrack us. We don't have enough time for that. I'd love to have you back on to talk about that, though. No, no worries. Okay, so we're talking to John O'Hara. He wrote the book A New American Tea Party, The Counter-Revolution Against the Bailouts, Handouts, Reckless Spending, and More Taxes. So, John, the reason I bring up these specific things is because it's so easy to say, oh, I'm for free markets, and I think the government gets too involved, right? But when you break it down, you see the real causes, and the causes are the ones that I'm referring to here. It, this, uh, the third example is very, very important, too. Look, if you t tell the bankers, you can make your bank as large as possible, you can use the deposits that are put in by the American people, you can take as much risk as you want, and you will be rewarded for that risk by making money in the short term. But if the banks blow up, it doesn't really matter to you because you don't own the banks. You're not the shareholders. Okay? What you are is the guys running the company. You already took your bonuses and went home with it. Can you see how that creates a terrible incentive to make short-term profits and destroy the company that you're working for and the economy? And I ask you that in the context of Alan Greenspan saying, I was wrong, I didn't realize that that was the flaw in the system. I, 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 I don't think that the taxpayer should be on the for it at the, at the front end, uh, as you're saying, which I, 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 I think I principally agree with, or on the back end with, with bailouts if things do go wrong. You know, I, I don't disagree with you there. Again, it, it's... It's a it's a matter of uh, it's not a perfect situation, um, but I think going forward with more regulation isn't the way to go. We shouldn't be back. No, but that doesn't, in the, in the but first John, but that doesn't make any sense. If we don't limit the leverage and we don't and we let them keep using the commercial banking, the same exact thing is going to happen, and they're going to come and say, "Well, already I lost all your money. What are you going to do?" Oh no, I, I'm agreeing with you that we shouldn't be that we shouldn't be back we shouldn't be backing that money anyway. Look. The, the, the bottom line is there are a lot of factors. There, what you're talking about, the, I mean, you can't underestimate the role Fannie and Freddie played and folks like Bernie Frank fighting regulation um, on those and those GSEs and, and, and twisting banks' arms to lend, to lend to people that they probably shouldn't have been lending. lending That's another to. thing I mean, we disagree on, because they didn't need any incentives to get any uh, twisted arms. They made tremendous money on, those, uh, on the fees, and they didn't keep any of those loans. They just repackaged them into CDOs and made more money by go, bringing them down. It wasn't that the government said, hey, you know what, can you really get lend to minorities and poor people? And that somehow twisted their arm into making a lot of money off the fees. No, they set up a wonderful system to take advantage of that. Now, don't get oh, me sure. wrong, I'm not saying Fannie and Freddie are, are, uh, are entities that make any degree of sense. Just yesterday, I went off on how ridiculous they are. And now Barney Frank has turned around and saying that they should be abolished, which I totally agree with. But that wasn't the source of the problem. Oh no! I think I think that's a major source of the problem. Look, I I, I think that we we can agree there's a lot of issues, uh, and, and I I think my so uh, you know I, I think a lot of folks think that that maybe it's more regulation. A lot of folks think it's it's less regulation, but no, but that, the status quo but is problematic. It's going to blow up again. Okay, last thing because we're desperately low on time. Look, I'm concerned, John, that a lot of these Tea Party things are actually funded by groups like Freedom Works that actually get their money from corporate America. And that's why they got you guys going and going crazy over health care to protect the private insurance companies. I'm just keeping it real with you. That's my perspective on it, okay? And, and making sure cap and trade goes down because that hurts the oil companies. But when it comes to Wall Street, the thing that, that you guys are supposed to be the most uh, excited about, there's no protest on Wall Street. You guys should be ripping Geithner and Bernanke apart. I don't see any protests on those. Why, why not the action where it needs to be? Oh, I think there's plenty of art directed at them, uh, and 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 and, uh, and politicians for enabling them, and 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 uh, and, and well, back on healthcare and on 
and on uh, it, and on uh, cap and trade. I mean, do you realize that that oil companies and, and the healthcare industry are are in bed with Democrats uh, and 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 helping to write these bills? I mean, it, it's it's just it's corporate. I absolutely realize that. But the alternative is the Republicans, who are 100 percent bought by those guys. I mean, no, 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 no. Who's Barack preventing Obama, financial, Obama, who's, Barack who's Obama preventing received, financial regulatory reform? Who's protecting the insurance companies? Who's protecting the oil companies? Barack On Obama, every single vote, it's almost every single Republican. Barack Obama has received more funding from health insurance industry. From the I don't disagree industry. with that, John. But you got to look. At, look, I'm perfectly willing to look at my side and say, look, these are the problems, right? And I do it every day. But when you come to the Republican side, they're all bought and paid for. I, I don't know why you guys aren't livid about that. I, I, I think a lot, all politicians take campaign money, I, but the Democrats are bought and paid for more uh, on from health companies than, than Republicans. That's, that's why they're in the West Wing helping to write this behind closed doors instead of yeah. uh, in front of C-SPAN cameras. That, that's simply not supported by the evidence, but we're out of time. Oh, sure it is. <laughs> check, check, look, look, look at Tim Carney's reporting at the Washington Examiner on, on, on the corporatism right. surrounding the health care debate. I, I'm going to let you have uh, that last word. And John, I really appreciate you coming on and talking about this. And his book is A New American Tea Party, everybody. Thank you, John. Thanks for having me. All right. Young Turk. Yeah.